First tonight, the incredible story of the trusting grandma who could so easily have been given the death penalty for drug smuggling. She unwittingly carried three quarters of a million dollars worth of cocaine halfway around the world after being set up by her son-in-law. I never forgive him. I forgive him never. Why should I get punished for something I didn't know? Renata Norgebauer is incredibly lucky that she isn't dead. She is the victim of an extraordinary betrayal from within her own family. A betrayal that could easily have led to her execution. To me, he was coming across a lovable person. And he respected me. That's why I was in disbelief. Why? Why would he do it? Renata has a job and is also the sole carer for her granddaughter. Her daughter lives and works as a teacher in Dubai, while her son-in-law, Hamado Nabole, lived with Renata here in Australia, but didn't really contribute to family life. I have my house open to him. He was, he didn't pay nothing here. I did everything for him, cooking, cleaning, washing, everything. Dropped him off, picked him up, looked after my granddaughter, but he's supposed to do it. It had been years since Renata had taken a holiday, so you can imagine her surprise when her son-in-law suggested she have a well-deserved break. He came home one night and he said to me, oh, Renata, you deserve to have a holiday. And I said, what do you mean a holiday? He said, well, you've worked so hard, you can't afford it. You like to go on holiday. Hamado told Renata that he was involved in the renovation of a Melbourne restaurant and that he needed to travel to Africa to source some tiles. He said Renata could come along and that his employer would cover all the costs for the both of them. I said, oh, well, that's lovely. I said, that's nice. The plan was to fly to Dubai in the Middle East where Renata could see her daughter and Hamado could see his wife. And then Renata and her son-in-law would fly on to South Africa. But the week before they were meant to travel, Renata was told they weren't going to South Africa after all. She said, things change, we're not going to South Africa, we're going to uh, South America, Brazil. Their destination now was Sao Paulo, the largest city in Brazil. After a Dubai stopover, the pair arrived at their final destination. And almost immediately, Renata says her son-in-law began acting strangely. He told her she was not to leave the hotel room that it wasn't safe out on the streets. Can we go shopping? No, it's all right. Then, over the next few days, he took a series of phone calls and left the hotel repeatedly. Renata was forced to stay inside, spending her days on the couch watching cable news. He was going back and forwards all the time. And he said, you can't go out, stay, lock the door behind. And I just couldn't quite work it out why. After a week, Hamado announced it was time to start the journey home. He said to me, your blue pack can go in my backpack and you can carry this. I said, what's it? Why? He said, well, there's nothing in your backpack. This is smaller, it's easier to carry. Oh, all right. That was it. The pair flew out of Brazil and back to Dubai where they were to stay overnight again with Renata's daughter. Initially, Renata said she left the backpack in her room with her suitcase. But a short while later, she and her daughter realised it was missing. We looked around and found it very high on top of a wardrobe which we couldn't reach, not even with the share. He is very tall and he pushed it to the back and my daughter said, Mum, have a look at it. There it is. The next morning, Hamado gave the backpack to Renata and the pair travelled to Dubai Airport. I was carrying it still all the time for four and a half hours before we went on the plane. So, through customs, through the scanner, everywhere. All the while, Hamado kept his distance and seemed agitated. He never came until in the last minute, 10 minutes to half an hour after, before we flew off. Finally, they arrived back at Melbourne Airport. This is the CCTV footage of Renata coming through customs. You can see her son-in-law lurking behind her, watching her every move. As she entered the customs hall, Renata was stopped by an officer who asked to look at the backpack. I looked at her and I said, look, this is not my backpack. This belongs to my son-in-law. The officer asked if she could cut open a sealed middle section of the bag. What happened next still brings Renata to tears. It's something I wouldn't like to go through again. I'm sorry. Inside the bag was a kilo and a half of what appeared to be cocaine. Its estimated street value, $724,000. Renata says she could not believe her son-in-law 
had done this to her. I made a half turn looking for him, not realising he was on the next table behind me already. And I said, it belongs to my son-in-law. He stood there and went a very quiet knot. And I thought, oh, don't you dare. Renata was taken to an interview room for further questioning by customs officials. These are the audio recordings of those interviews. I feel like an idiot. That's why I need to talk to my daughter. And she can talk to her husband. I'm going to test it yeah. and see what it is. Because yeah. um, we're, we're the belief that it's narcotics in here. Uh, I'll be dumbfounded. I'll uh, be, I, I, why should I get punished for something I didn't know? That's a presumptive indicator that the substance in here is actually cocaine. I've done nothing wrong. My son will get me that bag to carry. Yeah. But do you understand the cautions here? I'm feeling sick. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. I'm just devastated. I had nothing to do with it. I've got a granddaughter to look after. I wouldn't do things like that. Renata, was there a time when you felt that you weren't actually going to get out of customs, that you'd go straight from there to jail? Yes, my, that was my greatest fear, that I would not get out as a free person anymore. That must have been terrifying. It was. It was horrifying. After questioning by the Australian Federal Police, a decision was made to search Renata's home. It was so embarrassing. The neighbours... I just... <laughs> Everybody came out, the dog squad was here, they went right through the house. I feel like I was a criminal, not him. I was so bitterly angry. I just can't believe what he did to me. And they did that, and then I had to do statement after statement, weeks on end. Eventually, to Renata's incredible relief, police decided not to charge her with drug trafficking. They only charged Hamado with the crime. But Renata's ordeal wasn't over. In court, her son-in-law claimed he had nothing to do with the plan. What was it like sitting in court listening to your son-in-law say the drugs were yours and you were guilty? I had to have, I think, one or two breaks because I, I just couldn't believe it when the, his defence lawyer called me even a liar. He used to right out called me a liar. Luckily, the jury wasn't buying it. And eventually, Hamado Nabole was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. This is where what hurts the most. He was part of my family now. And this is the most hurtful thing you can do to anybody. I'm looking at my granddaughter, which looks so much like a father, and I've got to being reminded now. Looking back, Renata says she cannot fathom the risks she faced. In Brazil, you can receive the death penalty for drug trafficking. It's the same situation in Dubai, and both nations have the kind of justice systems you wouldn't want to rely on. How lucky do you feel that the drugs were discovered here in Australia? I'm very lucky. Somebody, somebody looked after me because I totally was the luckiest girl to come through here to Australia with no hiccup whatsoever. Renata's daughter is in the process of divorcing her husband. As for Renata, well, she says she's slowly trying to rebuild her life focusing on her future with her granddaughter and trying not to think about the shameful deeds of her son-in-law. I want to say I hate you. I hate you guts and the lies you put me through it and my family. I will never forgive you for that. And the Immigration Department has revoked the son-in-law's visa so he'll be sent straight back to Africa once he gets out of prison.